All right, in this video, we're going to talk um, about a few more tools we'll need um, to start our stiffness method example. Um, remember, the stiffness method is uh, kind of the basic method most computer softwares use when they analyze a certain structure drawn. All right. Um, the first thing we need to know is um, the difference between unrestrained and restrained. Okay. Say, let's say we had a beam and both ends were fixed, right? This beam has six degrees of freedom, right? It has this rotational one here, this rotational one, this vertical one, this vertical one, this horizontal one, and this horizontal one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, even though this has six degrees of freedom, at both ends of this beam, uh, three things can happen. This support can rotate, um, it can move upward, or it can move horizontally. And same thing with the right, right? It can rotate, it can move vertically, and it can move horizontally. But since these are fixed ends, you know that fixed ends support moment uh, vertical reactions and horizontal reactions. In other words, um, degrees 1, 3, and 5 are restrained because they, well, they can't move. Degrees of freedoms 1, 3, and 5 are restrained because they can't move. And here on the same, like, well, on the right side, there's the same thing, right? You have degrees 2, 4, and 6. And all three of them are restrained. I don't know why my pen does that. My pen's weird. Anyways, all six degrees of freedoms on this beam um, are restrained degrees of freedom. Now, if we had a beam here, and it was fixed on one end, and let's say it had a roller here on the other end. Again. On the left side, you have a rotational, you have rotation, you have a vertical, you have a vertical, and you have a horizontal, and you have a horizontal. So you have one, two, three, four, um, and or five and six, right? There's six degrees of freedoms. One, three, and five are all restrained, restrained, because they can't move. Um, but here on the right. This roller, you know, doesn't support a moment. So really, this degree of freedom, number two, um, is unrestrained, right? And then, you know, rollers can also move left and right. So you know that six is an unrestrained degree of freedom, right? The only restrained degree of freedom on the right side is number four. That's, well, oh, let me do that in red. Is number four. And that cannot move up and down, right? That's what a roller is. It supports a vertical uh, reaction. So this is restrained, restrained. And let me actually see if, uh, OK. Let's, uh, let's say we had one more beam. Um, it was a pin, a roller, a roller, and a roller, right? Each element, so I actually have three elements drawn here. I have one, two, three, or the three spans. Each span, remember each element, has six degrees of freedom. You have one. Rotation, rotation, rotation. You have a vertical, a vertical, a vertical, a vertical. And then you have a horizontal, 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 horizontal. So notice that element one has six degrees of freedom. Element two has six degrees of freedom. Element three has six degrees of freedom. Um, you know that a pin does not support a moment, but it does support a vertical and horizontal. So the unrestrained a degree of freedom here is this moment here, or this, this degree of freedom, right? This rotational one. Again, 
rollers don't support moments. So these are unrestrained. Um, and they also don't support horizontal forces. So all of these horizontal forces, they are unrestrained. So everything in green is unrestrained. Um, and then I guess I can do this vertical. This pin supports a vertical and a horizontal. So those two are restrained degrees of freedom. The roller here only supports a vertical, vertical, and vertical. So these are unrestrained. I'm sorry, restrained. Um, so this is these are a couple examples on unrestrained and restrained. Um, one more thing before we actually start a stiffness method example. Um, we need to also come up with, uh, so we have the stiffness matrix, right? We came up with that in the last couple videos. Uh, we also need a few more matrices. Uh, the first one is delta C, and delta C means complete. In other words, delta C is delta unrestrained over delta restrained. Oops. Um, and don't don't be worried if you're confused about what all this is. Um, you'll you'll know exactly what this is once we go through an example. Um, but for now, just know that delta is deformations, and basically this is saying the entire deformation column vector or matrix is all of your unrestrained deformations here at the top, and then on the bottom is all your restrained deformations. Okay. The next one is S sub complete or C, and S stands for um, structural stiffness matrix. Okay, and this matrix is actually four matrices in one. Okay, so I'm gonna draw this dotted line, and you can see the four different matrices. Um, you have S sub U U, S sub uh, U R, S sub R U and S sub R R. Um, in other words, these are unrestrained, 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 restrained, restrained, unrestrained, restrained, restrained. Okay? And this is the structural stiffness matrix. Um, don't worry too much right now uh, what this matrix is. Um, it'll instantly make sense once we do an example. Okay? And the last one is JL complete and JL stands for joint load and complete means um, there's joint load um, unrestrained over joint load restrained in other words the unrestrained joint load is um, say if you had a if you had a beam and it had some type of loading on top here's the joint right you have a roller here in other words um, all the unrestrained joint loads at the top and all the restrained joint loads at the bottom okay and again uh, this may not make too much sense right now but I promise once we go through an example it'll make a lot more sense okay so these are three other matrices uh, we need to derive uh, during an example um, and, and, and I guess we're pretty well equipped um, to do an example soon okay um, in the next video I'm gonna talk about uh, three equations we use in the stiffness matrix and then after that we'll go ahead and do an example. Alright, see you then.